Okay, very good. All right, so evening, good morning, evening to me. I'm in on the East Coast in the United States. My name is Courtney. I'm the Vice President of Sourcing and Product Development at Burr. That's what our name is, Burr, if you're cold. So this is what we provide is cooling yarn technologies. So kind of piggyback on Coats, right? Coats develops uh, all variations in yarn, thread capabilities. What we do is we take the technology into uh, the embedding of the yarn. So I'll share with you about what we do in that and how we can combat global warming. So that is, we're all about providing comfort. And so it's about how can we develop the most comfortable effect so we can lower our thermostats and stop using our energy guzzling air conditioning to help improve our carbon footprint. And as we know, the planet is getting much hotter. This is a uh, NASA uh, over the last 100 years showing temperature differences in, across our planet. And we can see from the past 140-year records, that we've had the 10 warmest years in history since 2005. And of the past six years, we have had the warmest of those past six years. Uh, so we are definitely seeing record temperatures and we have to keep ourselves cool. Now clothes, of course, they trap heat, right? They trap heat, they trap moisture, but clothes can cool us down. So now is our opportunity for innovation. And of course, every surface you touch can trap air and our clothing can actually cool us down. So a lot of the uh, technology or people will say it's cooling on the market, but it's really just a way to moisture management, to wick and to move the moisture away from the skin. We take it to another level, but before I get to there, let's look at human thermal regulation. So one of our competitors is 37.5. I'm sure some of you have heard of 37.5, the, uh, the company that develops um, the uh, thermal regulation. So we can also look at like phase change material. And uh, of course, those costs are quite prohibitive. And so we uh, focus on uh, developing our technology at the regular level. And thermal balance is really the key. So we look at what is your metabolic rate heat, the rate of your metabolic heat, those environmental conditions, and thermal con conductivity. So think about all of that heat stress and cold stress, uh, what different types of metabolic rates that you operate at and how your skin is reacting to radiation, convection, conduction, moisture buffering, moisture transport, and ventilation. So it's all about developing, uh, protecting against the elements. And if you look at different metabolic activity rates that you, you this is the amount of watts that your body gives off, uh, energy that your body is creating. And we can look from sleeping at just 80 metabolic rates uh, up to sorry, up to working out your peak performance. And also think about how much sweat is produced during various activities. If any of you have run a marathon or triathlon, you will sweat out up to 20 liters of water. So where is that going to go? You don't want it all trapped in your polyester. So you want it to be to be waking out and be moving. So these are you know, the basic principles and physics of cooling. Uh, we know we're in the textile industry, so this is a default in most all applications now. Uh, but the majority of applications use a wicking finish to provide evaporation. And what we do at Burr is we develop these cooling textiles. Our trademark 
name is Triple Chill Effect. And we have developed many uh, fabrics and yarn partnerships with Mills on our Triple Chill Effect. And we are looking to expand, especially into Vietnam. And primarily all of our technology now is in Taiwan and China. So we have many customers expanding their business in Vietnam, and that's what we're looking to develop more partnerships. So as an ingredient brand, we develop cooling fabric technologies with our superior performance. We operate both on developing for fibers and brands. Our technology is in the fiber, but we also uh, develop the fabric. And we customize solutions. So most of our customers come to us with a fabric, existing fabric they've run for many seasons, and they want to develop it better with Burr. So we handle all the development, and we also do all of the testing ourselves. And so the triple chill effect is our cooling minerals that are embedded into the yarn that provides cool to touch. These minerals also have active wicking and rapid drying properties, and it's embedded at the yarn stage. So you're not, uh, there's, there's also, we've done um, extensive testing uh, on, the, on the performance of this versus a generic polyester or, and or nylon, and it performs exactly the same. Uh, so it's extruded at the extrusion stage, and we also develop these, of course, in recycled polymers. And we're always constantly developing. So if you are looking for new technology as a spinner, uh, we're looking for new spinning partners. And one of the developments that we've patented is a bicomponent yarn with a nylon core, a polyester sheath. And it's wrapped either in cotton for denim application or in a viscose with a modal rayon on, on the outside of the yarn. So we call these our composite yarns. And what's great with this is you get the hand feel of the natural, but all of the performance that's embedded and will never lose the performance. And that's a cross section of our, of our composite rayon with the bicomponent yarn in the center. So how can we objectively prove that clothing cools us down? We have done uh, extensive, again, research, and every time we test a fabric, we test it on our Burr 3 triple chill. So that inclu includes the QMAX test. If you're familiar, there are uh, couple different, there's about four different tests that you can do to measure the cooling or the thermal effusivity rate of uh, the touch of fabrics. And QMAX has been a standard since the 1970s to, it, to, it uses a hot plate method. And what you're looking at here is the same type of information that you pull off our website. So if you go to burr.com, and log into the pro proven technology, then you can pull up this. It'll show you also which of these brands that we've done with apples to apples comparison data. And our current Burr polyester is testing. You want to have a higher test measurement on this QMAC. So that's our polyester on the left and the nylon on our right. The other testing measurement is in thermal effusivity. So this is specific to a, uh, both of those two previously I showed you were uh, circular knit fabrics. And this is uh, showing what we call C-Therm test. Uh, C-Therm is a company based in Canada and they have uh, multiple instruments, but specifically this one is a uh, thermal effusivity instrument according to our US ASTM D7984 standards. And there is an ISO standard. We also have a Hoinstein Institute certification. 
Uh, but the w- primarily our customers are in the U.S., so we use uh, U.S. standards for for our testing. And you can see here that us versus just a performance nylon, which would be a, a nylon with the same exact specs on the fabric production on the fabric composition, but with just a wicking finish added to it that we outperform in the cooling. And when we look at measuring wicking. Uh, we want to have a lo- as lower uh, wicking rate as possible. So uh, we have, that's an AATCC 197 measurement. Uh, those higher numbers there are uh, generic polyester and nylon. And then in a very uh, cool thing that we've done recently and that we'll be doing uh, more of this, I've got my fabrics. Uh, actually, I made custom made t-shirts sportswear t-shirts to fit this mannequin. Uh, We've done testing at North Carolina State University. This is a newer mannequin that's at Florida State University. It's called the Newton Sweating Thermal Mannequin. And we'll be doing another test on their brand new mannequin, which is called Andy, A-N-D-I. And what's great about this is there are 36 different points that you can you can calibrate this mannequin to show exactly what a person would be doing, but you have a lot more control in this environment. It's in a chamber, so you can control all the humidity levels, of course, the temperature and the metabolic rate. So what we did was put our uh, custom made t-shirt made out of our new polyester on this mannequin and after two hours, we, and this is in a static state. So this, this mannequin is standing, it's not walking or running. That'll be more tests that we're gonna be doing. Uh, And we've shown that after two hours, we can lower the body temperature by three and a half degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a very powerful tool that we will continue to, to develop. And of course, cooling fabrics are gaining attention. Uh, We've got, uh, this is a a quote showing that we can, we've proven uh, to lower technology. And we've been in business now for six years. So we'll continue to innovate and develop. We're still technically a startup. And of course, where are we going next? The uh, sustainable cooling story, uh, it's very, very easy for us to convert bottles into into a end use textile, of course, and we then embed uh, embed the materials, our materials at the extrusion stage. And all of our recycled materials are sustainably sourced through GRS and um, and uh, through different technologies with proven cooling performance. All righty, so that's that's what we do and that's what we're looking forward to developing more. This is my email and we are looking to, if uh, any of you have um, performance mills, we can, uh, we can collaborate on developing new opportunities together. Uh, when we look at the percentage, a lot of people ask me, what is the percentage of the burr minerals or the burr percentage of the burr fiber that has to go into fabric? We don't have an exact test, exact number that needs to go in. Uh, it really depends on the composition, construction, and weight of the fabric that we want to develop. We've developed from a very, very fine uh, sheet fabric, uh, very fine intimate lining for bras up to upholstery items and bedding. So mattress ticking, we've put our burr into, and also we developed a, a seat cover for upholstery for Tesla cars. So it's uh, an opportunity that is always presenting itself as well as in Uh, Shoe uppers. We have some new developments we're doing for uh, performance shoes uh, in the mesh, uh, putting our our cooling and performance yarn 
into the mesh items. So I'll go ahead and open it up for any questions that you all have. We have online questions for you. What fabrics are on the market now using BRRR? So you can go to burr.com and we have a blog site. And on that blog site, you can see the, uh, the developments uh, that we have done. Uh, a lot of our fabrics are used in sportswear. We have a golfwear line that recently launched. And Grayson is a sportswear company. Uh, we also have Sheets, which is a uh, sheet uh, bedding company that just launched new new sheets called their Midnight Collection. And so it's anywhere from apparel. Uh, you'll see also Ex Officio, which is now under the same with the, under Newell Brands, Marmot, Marmot Ex Officio. They're going to be, they're launching us uh, this summer. And we've constantly got new developments that are that are going on. I can't share with you all the brand names because they're not officially out in the market yet. Um, but as you know, we going through all the testing and the development uh, takes anywhere from like six months to two years for us to bring some of our fabrics to market. So, so just keep keep on the lookout, and you can see more then on the blog burr.com. Is there anything you want me to revisit or any other questions you have? Yes, we have one, one more question for you. Are the performance of several test results based on the brand new finished goods? Do you have the same table of comparison on the used product after several wash something? Yes, yes, we do have uh, the uh, wash comparisons. So happy to, uh, you can send me an email and I can share with you the exact test reports. Uh, we have shown that even after uh, 50 times wash, that there's no change in the in the performance testing. Uh, I did one measurement. I did it 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, and 50 times wash. And the performance is inherent in the yarn. So it's not going to, to uh, have any loss 